Hi guys, welcome back to Danganronpa. So I said I was going to stop playing. I said I was going to give up. I lied. Absolutely 100% lied. You see all that alcohol down there? That's for me. Okay, so we're going to leave Kyoko here alone with the body of her father. As one does. Now... What's the purpose behind the giraffe? Just wondering. Locker's already broken, but these ones aren't. Rattle rattle, locked, card reader. Give it a try, and then, no. Wait, but, what about the emergency handbook? Oh, let's give it one more try. All right. Took the emergency handbook and ran it out across the card reader and beep. All right, let's just what I was hoping for. Now let's see what we got inside. I have a folder. Just one thing, some kind of pocketbook. I don't see a name written on it, so I can't say for sure whose it is. There's some writing inside, it could be important. I don't like violating the owner's privacy, but I'd better take a look. Looks like a girl's handwriting. And all the letters are spaced out evenly, like whoever wrote them was measuring them. Whoever wrote this must have been really meticulous. Huh? I was flipping through the pocketbook, but my hand froze when I got to a certain page. I saw something familiar written there, words I'd heard before. There's a plan to turn Hope's Peak into a shelter and isolate the students here in a communal life. I decided to talk to the one who came up with the plan directly. It just so happens to be the headmaster and my father. This is Kyoko's? He was willing to give me some more details regarding the plan. Here's what he said. The point is to keep our student prodigies safe and to keep them as our hope for the future. Only their genius can overcome disaster and only their hope can overcome despair. For the future of our country, our world, it's not an exaggeration to call this our final hope. We must isolate our superior youth from the corrupted world to serve as the foundation for a new era. This is the only hope we have. I hope you'll be able to will I hope you'll be willing to go along with this plan. So that's what my father had to say to me. As usual, he made a selfish decision without consulting anyone else. I can't imagine a worse father. This can't be true, can it? But I knew it was, and I knew exactly who the pocketbook belonged to. Kyoko. It couldn't be anyone else. But if this be belongs to Kyoko, what was it doing in this locker? And what she wrote here completely contradicts what she already told me. She said she hasn't seen her dad since he left when he when she was little. I've decided to talk with the one who came up with the plan directly. It just so happens to be the headmaster, my father, Mukuro Ikusaba, the 16th student. What does all this mean? I clearly scanned the remaining pages of the notebook. I must have been looking for something that would be, prove me wrong about this whole thing. When I reached the last page, the question marks spinning through my head it just started spinning that much faster. When I looked at it, unlike the rest of the pocketbook, the writing here was messy, disorganized, scrawled. How could this possible? Oh, wow. I, I forgot for a second I was recording this and I just, I was reading that. How could this possibly make any sense? Despair walks among us, and so we survive. There's a second despair. So Mukuro Ikusaba isn't the only one. <laughs> Always two there are. But which one was the master? And which one was the apprentice? Locker opened. Let's see what we got. Nope, don't see anything to be a clue. Did I luck out and get the only locker that had story things in it? Might as well be thorough. Okay, this is definitely Yasuhiro's. Whoever this belonged to probably has organization problems in every part of their life. This is a crystal ball. A crystal ball? No, it can't be. There's no way he ever uses locker. It's just not possible. Oh, but it is Makoto, my boy. 
There's all kinds of textbooks and notebooks stat up, stacked up in no particular order. And dust everywhere. I have to assume whoever stuffed this is didn't do a lot of studying. Not that I can really talk. I'm trying to act as casual as natural as possible. I picked up one of the notebooks I saw. But the moment I looked inside the notebook, any sense of easiness I, I may have had evaporated. Yasuhiro Hagakure. What? There was no denying what I saw. Inside the notebook was written Yasuhiro Hagakure. Is this our Yasuhiro? Or our other Yasuhiro? The notebook also contained a large number of notes for a variety of different classes. Which would mean... He attended classes here? No, that can't be possible. I mean, Hiro came to the school at the same time as the rest of us. And we were all sucked into this evil world. We never had the chance to take any classes. So, what is this notebook? So, what the hell? Ask Hiro, what is wrong with you? Anyway. But the more I see, the less sense the sentence makes. Because these lockers... I mean, they had to belong to the previous students, right? So why am I seeing this? Why are there things in the lockers that look like they belong to people here? A notebook that seems like it belongs to Hiro. And a pocketbook that seems like it belongs to Kyoko. There has to be some kind of explanation. But if I want to find that out, I have to keep moving the investigation forward. And I have to believe in everyone. So, maybe at the beginning of the game when we got kind of swirled in, everything was normal. And everyone keeps talking about how a year ago the tragedy happened. So did our memories get wiped or something? Because that's the only explanation I can think of. Did I already check this locker? I did. Okay. Can't imagine anyone gets the locker open. I mean, you could move the doors, but I mean, hey, that's just me. Let's go give this pocketbook to Kyoko. Maybe, uh, maybe she'll be willing to believe me. There's all kinds of stuff I want to talk to her about, but I'd better give her some more time. Okay, never mind. I'm going to leave now. Thank you, map cheats. That only took me like 20 hours to figure out. Rattle, rattle. Definitely locked. I figured I wouldn't be able to get into the data center. But there's a clue in there still. There's still something I need to see in there, apparently. But since Monokuma wants to be a little fuck. Okay, good. There's more places I can go. So, what's what else can be in the bio lab? Because we already determined. That, uh... Oh, some kind of book will hear. This is one of those fridges you put dead bodies in, seen on crime shows and stuff. Does that mean everyone who's died is... They're all in this little room? Yeah. Some kind of weird machine, some built into the wall, upside a bunch of glowing lights. Right hand lights are off. So everyone who's died is in there. I will get them a proper burial sometime, just not now. I wonder if there's anything else I can kind of glean from this room. Kyoko and Byakuya think that the tragedy refers to what happened in here. What happened here was definitely or desperately horrific, absolutely. But the biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history kind of seems like an overstatement. Right. Leave the no, hold on. There has to be something else in here. The room is covered in blood, I can hardly seem to look at it. Well, get over it, Makoto. It's the only real blood you've seen in this entire game. Okay, so all that's left is the garden and the dojo. So if I go back to the garden, what's gonna wait for me? Um, where's the body? Huh? It's gone. Mukuro's body. 
It's not here? Oh, God. Maybe the body's inside the tool shed. I didn't find anything even close to a dead body. But it's not in here either. It must be... Could it be in the bio lab? The corpses aren't the only thing I need to check in here. There's one other thing. That tarp. A tarp played a key role in another case, so... I'd better look into it. The killer used the tarp to keep the sprinklers from getting the body wet. Which means the killer might have left some clue behind here. Huh? I didn't notice this before, but there's a small stamp in one of the corner of the tarp. It says Biolab. Then this originally came from the Biolab, but the Biolab was locked. And the only one who could have gotten in there would have been either the Mastermind, who is a student, or Kyoko. Okay, let's get going to the Biolab. Which I forget I can teleport to. Hold on. That's all I really need to check here. Okay, cool. To the Biolab. You're kidding me. Um, this is a school announcement. Is everyone working hard? Is your investigation coming along nicely? Well then, since you're all giving it your best, your generous headmaster will give you a little hint. <laughs> For those of you who are interested, please make your way to the gym ASA possible. Oh, you're trying to distract me from the bio lab. You're going to get rid of Mukuro's body. What? Now he wants to give us a hint? That's suspicious. There's no doubt about that. This could be a trap. But even knowing that... He said to go to the gym, right? No! Makoto! You dumbass! Oh, hey, hero! Huh, Makoto! Why'd you act so surprised? Uh, um... Oh, no reason. You heard Monokuma's announcement, right? Are you here to find out what he has to say? I... I... I just did, actually. I'm on my way out. You already talked to him? What'd he say? Listen, sorry, but I... I gotta go. Hero, wait! There's no point in trying to stop him. He ran off like a frightened animal. Hero? It was like he was trying to avoid me. I was hoping to talk to him about the notebook I found in the locker. Has he been hiding something this whole time? Well, there's nothing we can really do about that. It's just I, now. Boing. Hello. Been a while since I've seen that cutscene. I am Monokuma! Hello, welcome, welcome, hello! Are you ready for your final hunt? Well, it just so happens to be the one in the envelope on the ground in front of you! The envelope? Okay. This must be the envelope. And just so you know, I won't be answering any questions about what you find inside. What? Yeah. Don't worry, just get on with it. Okay, I guess. Monokuma's cryptic words didn't make me feel any better, but I picked up the envelope. And opened it. What I found. A single photograph. It features a bunch of faces I recognized extremely well. Wait, where, where am I in this? Oh, wait, did I take the picture? Or wait, were these people in class before? It was everyone who'd come to Hope Speak at the same time as me. Wait, but... There's someone behind Sayaka. She's the only one I don't recognize. Wait, that's not true. I do recognize her. That's right. When Byakuya and I were in the headmaster's room, when we looked at that file... Mukuro Ikusaba? Then this girl is... What? Why? Why is Mukuro here with everyone else? And even more than that... Just having everyone here pose like this is weird enough by itself. And we're all wearing matching uniforms, except for Celeste, because she's special, and Leon, because... Why not? And, you know, Sakura, because... She's too swole for that. And... He has a hero. Okay, I'm just gonna stop talking. And now that I'm looking at it, it's not even everyone. 
I'm not in the picture. I'm the only one not there. This picture is all of other 15 students, but not me. But I guess that makes sense. After all, I don't remember ever taking a picture like this. I went to junior high with Sayaka, but the first time I met with everyone else was when I arrived here at Hope Speak Academy. So it's natural for me not to be in this picture, but what's definitely unnatural is everyone else is in the picture. I thought everyone was like me and didn't know each other until they got here. But if this picture's real, then could that mean, could it be everyone else and just me? Everyone here except me is... How long are you going to keep this rambling sol soliloquy of yours, Hamlet? What are you going to do? You're kind of getting in the way of standing there, you know? Hmm. So, I mean, get out. But I told you I'm not fielding any questions. I'm what kind of mystery would this be if I gave you all the answers? That'd be totally out of left field. I guess that means she's done talking. Damn it. Group photo has been added to the truth section bullets of truth bullet section of your notebook. What's the significance of, like, did ever? No, no, no one knew each other before they came here. But no, no, wait, I'm thinking about this all wrong. Nobody knew each other until they came to this place. But when we went to Hope's Peak, when it was still a school, we did know each other. And with that confusion in hand, I left the gym dejected. How does that count as a hint? It just made me even more confused. Also, I kind of realized why Yasuhiro was scared of me, because now he kind of thinks I'm a ghost. I swear to God, if that's what it is. That's probably going to be what it is. He, he thinks I'm a ghost, because I wasn't in the picture. How does that count as a hint? It just made me even more confused. Is that what Monokuma was going for? Did he put together a fake photo just to confuse me? But it looked so real, so full of life. How could anyone fake that? Which would mean, everyone but me. Maybe I should just ask everyone directly. That should clear all this up. No, I have to clear this up. Awesome music. Alright, map, tell me where to go. Oh yeah, that's right, I know where to go. I need to go to the bio lab where I was distracted. Or wait, hold on. Since Monokuma's not in the bio lab, or the, in the bio lab, the data center right now, could I get in? It was worth a shot. Anyway, back to what I was doing. I decided to visit the bio lab one more time. And the first thing I saw when I got there was her. Passed out. Again. Toko? I should probably check on Toko. Yeah. Hey, Genocide Jack, you gonna wake up? Toko, you okay? No, no. She's not dead, is she? Hi, Genocide Jill. Hua! It's cold, super cold. It's so cold, I think I might catch cold. If you've taken naps in places like this, I'm sure you will. I what? I was asleep? Ah, I must have fainted again. Uh -huh. I bet you were standing there staring at me, getting all excited, weren't you? No, I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Oh, then what? Hot and bothered? Straight up horning. Um, okay, so why did you pass out? <laughs> I don't know, last thing I remember was me waking up just now. What did you do to Miss Morose? Oh, that's right. Your memory stops and starts each time you switch. <laughs> Bingo bazinga! We share some basic knowledge, but our memories are very much separate. And don't say it like it's a bad thing. It's a blessing as far as I'm concerned. Because even if she forgets something, I totally remember. So it's like double the memory. Uh, no, it's more like half. Genocide Jill's mem Jack's memory has been added to the truth section. But all I want to know right now is, where's my little darling? Tell me now or I'll slit your throat. I don't know. I'm sure Biaki's around here somewhere doing his own investigating. By himself? I assume so. I knew it. I totally knew it. I'm a total pro when it comes to all things master. Anyway, I gotta hurry. I can't even imagine how lonely he must be right now. In this house, we love and appreciate you, Genocide Jill. Alright? 
Toko shot off, her eerie laughter echoing behind her. I totally forgot to ask her about the picture. Well, there's no point in asking Genocide Jack anyway. Besides, I have more important things to do right now. Why did Toko faint? Because she opened that. The fridge is open. I'm sure they were all shut tight last time I was here. That must be why she passed out. Is that is that uh, Kyoko? Right. She faints so easily. How long were you standing there? Kyoko! Makoto. It's getting late, isn't it? Are you okay? Indeed. I'm sorry if I made you worry. No, you don't have to apologize. Listen. But listen, about this room. Oh, yeah, it's... It seem... It's a morgue. Yeah. I knew it. I suspect as much. And Toko must have looked inside the fridge, seen what was in there, and... Well, there you have it. You knew she fainted? Indeed. I was on my way here when Genocide Jack came running past me. Now I assume she must have sneezed, but once I got inside, the real reason became clear. It would seem... I imagine she came here to investigate when she opened the slot there. That's when she saw the body inside and dropped like a bag of rocks. Why has everything got to be so difficult with her? Anyway... Anyway, we should close it up. Don't want to leave it hanging open like that. Yeah, good idea. Makoto. Give me a hand with this. Kyoko approached the fridge, hands outstretched. But suddenly she stopped. What's wrong? Listen. Maybe we should wait a second before closing it. How come? Because Mukuro's body is in here. Mukuro's corpse? Mukuro's body is inside the fridge? How did you not... Makoto. You know, Kyoko's only, like, the most intelligent one here, because she's the only one who actually thinks about these things. I see. Just like every other time, the Mastermind probably brought it up here while we were in the class trial. The Mastermind did it? Because they assumed it wouldn't be that we wouldn't be doing the class trial over again, I guess. So... You may be right. Either way, now I can finally get a good look at the body. Oh, that's right. Kyoko didn't get a chance to check the body during the last investigation. Makoto. I do need to do my own examination of the corpse as soon as possible. I'm going to find a clue this time, and I'm going to grab the mastermind by the tail. Okay, so what should I do? So then. Why don't you just wait over there? I'll let you know as soon as I'm finished. Go, go. Shoo, shoo. Wait, just over there? That's it? Okay, I'm just going to chill over here. More importantly... Let me just talk to Kyoko. I should ask Kyoko about the group photo. After all, she's in it too. Don't let me interrupt your investigation, but I wanted to talk to you about something. What is it? It's about the announcement Monokuma made earlier. <sighs> you mean the one about a hint or something? I didn't take him up on the offer. Why not? Because... The only reason he'd give us a hint at this point would be to confuse us, to cloud our judgment. I can solve this mystery on my own without whatever hints he may have to offer. That's a good point. I wish I could go back and do the same thing, but what's done is done, I guess. Standing here looking at her. I don't think she's hiding anything from me. Is she right? Did the mastermind forge that picture as a trap to confuse us? That's gotta be it. There's no other explanation. Well, let me check the body. It's a fridge meant for storing dead bodies. I can't do it. I can't look inside. Okay. Oh yeah, I want to check out the tarp. You know, I think I've seen a tarp like this somewhere before. No, really? This man has the memory of a goldfish, I swear. And if I remember right, that tarp said Biolab. And that's the tarp that was used to help camouflage the murder in the garden. At some point, someone got it from the Biolab and took it over there. And the only way someone could have done that is if they could have gotten inside the Biolab, which was locked. On the left side of the fridge, a bunch of blue lights are on. These ones aren't. It would seem the blue light comes on when the slot is occupied. So when someone's in there, the blue light comes on. Wait, so... Junko, Sayaka, Leon, Chihiro, Mondo, Taka, Hifumi, Celeste... Wait... That doesn't make sense. Mukuro's body shouldn't be in here, then. There's a body missing. Looking around, the number of lights that are on, including Mukuro's, there's nine in all. Nine. Nine lights? Yeah, I knew it. Something's weird about this. There's a body missing. Okay, Makoto, I'm done. Already? Jeez, that was fast. Indeed. 
Anyone can do good work if they go slow. In that spirit, I'll make my report brief. So, did you find anything? Indeed. I paid careful attention to the wounds and the traces of blood, and it seems like, highly likely that the stomach wound and bl blow to the back of the head were inflicted after death. Really? The burnt tissue made things a little difficult, but I'm completely confident in my findings. So that means neither of those were the fatal injury, right? Then what was the fatal injury? Due to the explosion, the victim's identity is unknown. Mukuro Rikusaba, the 16th student. They were, however, dead before the blast. The victim had been stabbed a single time with a knife, which went completely through the body. It also had been struck in the head with an object about as thick as a metal pipe. The body was covered with other wounds, but these were at least several days old. The only other option is those other wounds, but the file said they were old. Is that right? Where does it say they're old? Huh? Because... All the Monokuma file says is that they were inflicted at least several days ago. I guess I don't see the difference. Wrong. Well, the difference is immense, considering the impression they give. Listen. You seem to be equating several days old with simply old. However... But that doesn't quite follow logically. Old wounds make it sound like they've been there forever, like they're not related to the murder. Are you saying they are? Well, all we got from the Monokuma file right after she was killed, right? So if the wounds were at least a few days old, there's no way they could have had anything to do with it. So then... But what if, a, what if Mukuro herself wasn't killed within the last few days? What? At the very least... Certainly you can allow it as one of the many possibilities, can't you? One of... many? Right. A detective doesn't have supernatural powers. There's no way to predict the answer from the beginning. Unless you're Joseph Anderson. Instead, the ideal detective begins by imagining as many possible scenarios as they can. In other words, they envision these possibilities without prejudice, without bias, using only their logic and common sense. Then, as they investigate, they test whether, what they can find against each of these possibilities. <laughs> of course, me telling you this doesn't mean you'll be any good at detective work, even though I've been solving every single fucking case. But beyond using that to solve this particular mystery, you should keep that in mind for the future. Hey. So, if there's anything else you'd like to know about the condition of the body, now's the time. Come to think of it, there's one thing. Earlier when I was looking at Mukuro's profile, it listed her height and weight. So... 5 foot 7 inches 97 pounds. Vitals were 31, 22, 32. Did I get all that right? You remembered all that? They are indeed consistent with the corpse. So then... Indeed. And don't forget the fa about the Fenrir tattoo. There's absolutely no mistake. Indeed. Our victim in this case is, without a doubt, Mukuro Ikusawa, the 16th student, hiding somewhere within the school. Watch out for her. How many times can I say that before it gets annoying? And? Is that all you wanted to ask? I think so. So then. And it looks like we have no further business with Mukuro's body. Let's get going. It's kind of chilly in here. You are wearing a jacket. Oh, wait, are we not going to put the body back? Don't you think it's kind of sad leaving it out like this? Why? Sad. Did you forget she was her enemy once? Part of the ultimate despair. But she still got killed. She's still a victim. Hey. Have you ever heard the phrase, you reap what you sow? W well, yeah, but still. Whew. You really are naive, you know that? It's really quite appalling. I almost read that as appealing. But she could have abandoned me, but she decided to help me instead. So for someone like that, what does it mean to be naive? So then... I think we all, we've done all we can do here. Back to our separate investigations, yes? Hold on! I still have one more thing to do. Something I need to talk to Kyoko about. I need to ask her about the pocketbook I found in that locker. If I don't do it now... Hey, Kyoko? I did have one last thing. I know I shouldn't, but I feel like I have to ask. What? Go ahead, then. Out with it. Have you really not seen your dad e even once since you got here? What? So... What do you mean? Well, you know all those lockers on the second floor of the dorms? Indeed. I do, yes. But to get into any of the lockers, you'd need the handbook of whoever the locker belongs to. Actually, I managed to get them open using that emergency handbook. I see. The one you found in the headmaster's hidden room. And? So, did you find anything worthwhile in the lockers? I found a pocketbook, and after looking through it, I think it must be your pocketbook. Why is that? What makes you say that? Because... Like I said, only the locker's owner should be able to get into it, right? I can't imagine those lockers belong to any of us. 
After all, we only got access to that area just recently. What I'm saying is there's no way I could have had access to any of those lockers. And if I did have a pocketbook, why would I bother putting it in a locker? Everything you just said makes perfect sense. But there was something written inside. It was about the headmaster. About your father. What? If that's true... Could that mean... That video is real too? Vid video? Makoto. Makoto, I think everything is finally starting to fit together to la 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 la. Makoto, I think everything is finally starting to fit together to reveal a cohesive picture. Although I'm afraid that picture might be worse than anything we could have imagined. What are you talking about? I... I need to go investigate those lockers right now. I need to confirm what you just said with my own two eyes. Oh, let me give you the Headmaster's Handbook. That way you can... So... That won't be necessary. If I'm right about this, I shouldn't have any problem opening the locker with my own handbook. After all, it would seem that it's my locker. Your locker? Makoto. If you watch this, it'll make sense. A DVD? And it says Class 78, Urgent Interviews? So... I found it in that hidden room after you left. Anyway... I don't have time to explain exactly what I think it means, so just watch it for yourself. I think you'll realize exactly what it means. You'll understand why you've found my pocketbook in a place none of us have ever seen before. None of this makes sense right now. But I guess that means there's some important clue on this DVD. I swear if I was right. Makoto. Oh, and now it's my turn. Do you have a second to listen to me ramble? Ramble? In other words. So, as it turns out, the arrangement I made didn't stick. What I mean is, I'm less and less sure of everything. Even my own feelings. You're talking about your dad, right? I can never find the answers to the questions I wanted to ask. For the rest of my life. And all because of the mastermind. However... But there's one thing I am sure of. When it comes to the mastermind, there's no room in my heart for forgiveness. I... I swore to destroy the mastermind. This is just one more reason to follow through on that. Kyoko's eyes burned with the fire of determination. The determination to defeat the mastermind. Hm. It's strange. To be confronted with his death and suddenly feel this way. I couldn't care less if my father had found happiness. Why? So why is it... Why does it bother me so much to know how he suffered? It's ridiculous. There's just no understanding it, I guess. She let out a small laugh as she said it. But her smile was filled with sorrow. Whew. So, that's it for my rambling. There's still much to do before I can consider my task complete. Yeah, you're right. Hey. But keep this in mind. There's only ever one absolute truth. Whether that truth serves justice or suffering, whether it's the greatest truth or the worst. What do you mean? Makoto. Even if the truth you uncover is filled with hopelessness, you still can't give up hope. Absolutely not, because... Because all I can do is keep moving forward. That's pretty much all I'm good at, you know? <laughs> Indeed. Sorry if that was strange. So then... Anyway, I need to get going. I'll see you at the class trial. She died shortly thereafter. I'd better go in myself. I grabbed the DVD from Kyoko. She headed to the AV room to check it out. Kyoko said something about a hopeless truth. But no matter what happens, I won't lose hope. Even if it's the worst truth in the world, I can't afford to lose. Let's see, how many students are left? We have Yasuhiro, Byakuya, Toko, Kyoko, Aoi, and me. So that's six. Counting the mastermind, that's seven. That doesn't make any sense. So hold on. Junko, Sayaka, Leon, Chihiro, Mondo, Hifumi, Taka, Celeste, Sayak or Sakura, and Mukro. That's right, right? Like, the number's right if you count Makoto, but if you don't count Makoto, there's only 15. <sighs> Something about that's not making sense to me. I don't know what it is. Something's screwy about this. And I don't like it. Hi, how are you doing? That's not... 
Okay. Hey, hero. Huh. Makoto, what's going on with you? Every time I see you, you freak out like that. And no, I... No. Sorry, but I'm in a big hurry. Once again, he ran off like a terrified rabbit. Hero, what's wrong? I still wasn't able to talk about the notebook I found. It was like he was avoiding me. Like he was afraid of me. Why? There's only... <laughs> he thinks I'm a ghost. That's that's all he thinks. That's it. He thinks I am a ghost. This man is insane. Where is he? Okay. Hina's there. So maybe I should talk to her. But... Okay, Byaku's in the archive, as one does. Okay, I'm gonna start... I'm thinking I can't find him again for a while, so... For now, let's just go... Let's go check out Byakuya. It's been a while since we talked to him. Where am I going? Okay, good, I was going the right way. Alright, Byaku Tagami, reveal what you know. Oh, Byakuya. Listen, do you think we could talk? Byakuya? That's enough. I have nothing to talk to you about. Hmm. Don't talk to me as if we're friends. Oh, he talked to Monokuma, and now he thinks. Oh, god damn it, Byakuya. Byakuya, wait! But of course he didn't. He just walked away. What the? Why is he acting like that? Like he was purposely trying to avoid me. Why does everyone hate me right now? What the hell? I came back from the dead for you fucks. Hina, at least you'll still love me, right? Right? Please? Love me? So this is where you've been hiding. Listen, I was hoping to talk to you. Oh. Makoto? Sorry, gotta go. Hina, not you too. What? She ran off so fast I didn't even have time to ask her to stop. Hina, why? Why don't you talk to me? I came back from the dead for you fucks. If I stayed dead, you'd all be destroyed. What? Is... Guys. I shouldn't have risen. I should have just stayed in the fucking dumpster. Anyway, let's play the DVD. It said that I was playing, but nothing appeared on screen. I stared into the black of the monitor. It must have only been a few seconds, but to me it felt like an eternity. And then all of a sudden, an image appeared. Sayaka? It took me by total surprise. I hadn't seen Sayaka in who knows how long, and there she was. Okay then, are you ready to begin? The voice I heard was of the man positioned on one side of the screen. It was the voice of a middle-aged man. I do apologize, but I hope you don't mind if I record our conversation. I'm a little slow, you know. I never really got the hang of taking notes while having a conversation. It sounded like he was trying to make a joke, but Sayaka's tense face didn't move a single millimeter. So this video is meant to serve as a kind of contract substitute. It's not that I don't trust you guys. It's more like insurance. So please don't worry too much. Okay. Now then, let me get straight to the point. There is a chance that you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? Uh, um... You want me to accept- why wouldn't they get her to voice that? Just wondering. You want me to accept that? Sayak was obviously at a total loss. That made total sense. Who would agree to spending the rest of their life in the school? I... Accept. What? Thank you. And I'm sorry about all this. 
Well, I can promise you that I will do everything in my power to keep you safe. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, I give you my word. Good man. As if on cue, that's where the video cut out. Wait, why was only one? There was a lot I hadn't understood up till now. But this, only this. I simply couldn't comprehend what I'd heard. Because I know how much Sayaka wanted to get out of here. I know how much she wanted to escape and pursue her dreams with her friends again. She wanted that so bad, she tried to frame me for murder. So why? Why would she say yes to living here for the rest of her life? As I sat there thinking about it, I noticed a sudden light. On the, media, on the monitor, the video that I thought was finished flashed back on screen. My eyes darted back to the screen. And if I was confused before, what I saw next pushed me right over the edge. It's gonna be me, isn't it? Yep. Huh? What I saw was me. Impossibly, undeniably me. So, Makoto, before we begin, I should let you know that I'll be recording our conversation. Yes. <laughs> Makoto, I should let you know that I'm going to be recording our conversation. Yes. <laughs> the way he said that. <laughs> Just the little... Yes. He and I were having what seemed to be a fairly normal conversation. But I, the I in the here and now, couldn't comprehend why I, w I was such a weird speaker. Had absolutely no memory of it. I had no memory of even meeting the headmaster, much less sitting down to talk to him like this. Now... Shall we get straight to the point? Yes. Makoto, there's a chance you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? Yes. <laughs> Stop! Please! This can't be real. I said yes? No, Makoto, you said... Yes. I'm sorry I'm putting you through all this. Well, I mean... We don't have much of a choice, do we? But I promise that as long as you're in this school, I will do everything I can to protect you. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, that's the very least I can do for you. Yes. Oh, hell. Once again, the video cut out. From there, the video repeated the same scene again and again with the others. Biakia. Toko. Hina. Everyone. They all said that they agreed to live in the school forever. And then. Kyoko. Her interview with him had been recorded just as clearly. Without a doubt, she had met him. She'd sat down with the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, her father. And when he asked her the, his question, she, she answered the same as everyone else. She accepted a life within the school. Just as Kyoko's interview was wrapping up, the monitor suddenly went black. Huh? It wasn't just the monitor. The DVD player itself apparently turned off. Which, of course, meant that the DVD wasn't playing anymore. What the heck just happened? Say what? Oopsie! Looks like it broke! Out of service! Well, it just so happened to break now? You little... Too bad! Now then, when? Doesn't matter. Failure can strike anywhere, anytime! That's what failure is, right? Failure my ass, you cut the power on purpose. Well, whatever. Even if I watched the whole thing, it'd just be more of the same. Unless... Unless we were getting to something. He'd ask them the question and they all said yes. I couldn't help myself. I thought he... I, la, la, la. I couldn't help myself. I let out a huge, exasperated sigh. But as I did, I remembered something. That's right. I fainted too, and when I woke up, I noticed a strange feeling of separation within myself. A disconnect. It would seem... Thinking back on it now, at that point my memory was gone. At the time, I'd forgotten. I couldn't remember why I'd come to the school, and I couldn't remember what my ultimate ability was. But what would make you forget all that? Hey, 
Strange, isn't it? It's hard to imagine it happened by chance. It seems much too convenient. A convenient outcome. Something that seemed to obviously work in favor of the mastermind. So does that mean I've lost my memory too? What about the others? Have we all forgotten? Or... Ding dong, bing bong. Please tell me that's not it. For anything that has a start, there has to be an end. Oh no. And if the end comes, then that means it's time for a fresh start. That's it. It's time for the class trial. There is no night that doesn't have a dawn. Although that dawn is totally pitch black. There is no storm that won't eventually end. Of course, then that leads to drought. But as I said, every end is the promise of a new beginning. Which is why I'm sure we'll get to meet again. Because the end is only the beginning. Anyway, let's get started. The beginning of the end of the class trial. Everyone gather once again at you know where. <laughs> it's about to begin again. The class trial is going to start. The final class trial. The last time all of our lives will be on the line. The last time hope and despair are on the line. I don't have a choice. I have to do this. Okay then. This is the end. Never mind, I want to run. No. There's no time for running. I guess I'm the first one this time. Makoto. You're early, Makoto. Listen. Does that mean you feel prepared? Yeah, for now at least. But where's everyone else? Why aren't they here yet? However. Don't worry, I'm sure they'll be here soon. And just like she said. Byakia. Byakia? They arrived one after another, but they were all in the same state of shock. Hina's pissed at me. Hina? Hiro's scared of me. Hiro? And Byakuya just doesn't care about me anymore. It wasn't any normal silence. It was a deafening silence of fear and suspicion. It was like the first trial all over again. Okay, I guess that line. I'm late! <laughs> ah, strong silent master, so wonderful, so cool, so hot, my loins are ablaze! Yes! Now listen, everything will be just fine if you leave it to me. My With my scissor sharp there. scissors in hand, I'll stab and gouge and shiv the master of evil. But I thought you couldn't kill anyone but adorable little boys. <laughs> if it's what master wants, I can be a go boy, girl, or anything in between, like your hero. Oh god, that sounds bad. I can handle it. <laughs> Where am I? No human language can describe the disappointment I'm feeling right now. <laughs> Hold on one second. That is a great fucking meme. <laughs> is everyone here? Ooh, and wearing our gloomy Gus faces, I see. Okay, well then, let's begin. This final class trial is going to be slathered in pitch black despair. Climaxium sorrow. That's fine. You're right. This is the class f final class trial, and this time it'll be fair. What do you mean this time? Stop with all the slander. I'm a bear in good standing, you know. If there was a Mr. Fair Guy Universe contest. I'd take the home the tiara every year. I'm gonna win this game super fair and square. Today, and I'm like sure everyone watching at home knows that despair is mightier than Denda Hope. Stop talking. Enough of your tedious dribble. Begin the trial already. Sure, sure, let's begin the trial already. Makoto is in trouble. I'll be waiting for you down below. You guys. So don't try and run away. <laughs> Laughing as loud as ever, Monokuma disappeared. Hm. Whatever. In the name of this will family. be over in no time. With an exact ex inexplicable confidence, Byaku was the first into the elevator. One by one, the others followed. Hina's pissed at me. Hero's scared of me. Toko doesn't know what's going on, as usual. Nobody made eye contact, nobody said a word. They just disappeared into the elevator. 
Okay. They're all acting odd. Like they're paranoid suspicious of each other. However. But you know what that is, don't you? Yeah, I think so. However. Well, you can tell us all about it soon. At the class trial. You're right. I'm ready. So. Ready to win, right? Of course. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you say that. And then Kyoko was aboard the elevator. <sighs> Here we go. I started making my way toward the opening. They closed the door so that I couldn't come down. Step after step after step toward that gaping maw. I'd resolved that this would be the last time. I repeated myself that there was no fear, no mystery left. I pushed the anxiety down, calmed my trembling body, and punched Biakia square in the face. And finally, on steady legs. I passed the threshold and stood in the elevator. Without warning, it began to descend. Deeper and deeper. Deeper, deeper, deeper still. Deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Deeper and deeper it fell. I can't wait to see how he redecorated it this time. I closed my eyes and sight fell away, as one does when they close their eyes. All sound too disappeared. Alone in the universe, I waited for the elevator doors to open for the last time. What could have been seconds or centuries later? I felt the gentle vibration of the elevator come to an end. I slowly opened my eyes. Oh, this is the final trial site? What do you think? Isn't it just perfect background for deciding a person's fate? Yeah! It's a long way to the last stage, the always exciting final boss battle. <laughs> and I'm gonna sit in on this one. I'll just sit right here in the vacant 16th seat. Trials, well trials, then, let's trials. begin. Oh. No deadly class trial spiel. Interesting. Now, here's the thing. I want to play this now, but I feel like this trial is going to take like three hours. I don't have three hours, unfortunately. So next time is going to be the finale. I don't care how long it is. I don't care how long it takes. I'm going to finish this game in that video. So thank you all so much for watching this one. And next time we uncover the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba, the 16th student, the one they call the ultimate despair.